Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob WV7W, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go over the best tool for ham radio that isn't radio related. Not an antenna analyzer, not even an O-scope or a multimeter. Nope. This time we're going to look at another hobby of mine that has some real utility to ham radio. In addition to ham radio, I am a maker and have been for as long as I can remember. Certainly long before the term maker made the scene. And my favorite maker tool is my 3D printer. Don't get me wrong, I love my CNC and laser cutter too, but the 3D printer can be exceptionally useful to ham radio. Here are just a few of the useful ham related things that I have made. Here's a couple things for my Soda Beams Tactical Mini. This is a ring that you attach the guy lines to. It slips over the mast and rests a few sections from the bottom. I designed this, and the nice thing is about it, if your mast is a different size, you can scale it up or down to fit yours. And I did just that to make, take this exact same design, but I scaled it down for my Soda Beams Carbon 6. And I also made these little tensioning thingies. Finally, I made this little guy here that goes at the top of the mast to attach a wire antenna or dipole to. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I'm a huge fan of Atom K6 ARK stuff. And I recently did a video on this little CW paddle. But here is the latest model, which is a portable straight key. I also have several of his antenna winders, like this one here that holds my mini NFED half wave. Speaking of NFEDs, here's one of the first that I made. This is a design by UI1 OPK that I got off of Thingiverse which is one of the places to download 3D files. But here is actually the first one I made. I designed and built this thing myself. It's a little big and bulky, but it works great. Being able to take an idea and design and print it so that you have something you envisioned is really cool. For example, this guy here that is the KX2 holder for my kneeboard. It holds the KX2 while I'm doing portable ops like parks or summits like the video where I activated Badger Mountain. I wanted something to hold my radio as I was working stations. This took me several iterations to get the dimensions just right, but it has proven to be a great asset to my portable operations. There are even some commercially available products that are 3D printed, like these CW keys and paddles from CW Morris. These things are very nice, and it goes to show that 3D printing isn't limited to just homemade things. So those are some of the things that you can do with a 3D printer. But how do you get started? Well, the first thing you'll need, obviously, is a 3D printer. 3D printers are like many other things in life, and they have a huge range in price, quality, and features. So many, and in fact, that it can be difficult to decide what to get. For someone starting out, I'd recommend going down either of two routes. The first is for those looking for a budget printer that is good, but won't break the bank. And that is the Ender 3. The Ender 3 can be had for as little as $200. But if you can go just a little bit more, I'd recommend getting the version 2. And there's links for both of those versions in the description. The next route is for those that would rather spend a little more up front and don't want to tinker a lot, but just want to print things. And that is the Prusa i3 Mark S which is $699 for the kit, which is the way I recommend doing it. It is helpful to know how these things go together in case you need to do any maintenance on it. Prusa just released the Mark IV, but I'd wait a bit on buying one of those until all of the bugs are worked out of this very new version. Next, you're going to need a slicer. The slicer is a program that takes the 3D model, also known as an STL file, and slices it up layer by layer and turns it into G-code that the printer can understand and execute. I currently use Prusa Slicer since it's tailored to my printer, but it can be used for just about any FDM or fusion deposition modeling printer like the Prusa Ender 3. Now Prusa Slicer is based on Slicer, which is also available. Another popular option is Cura, and Cura was the slicer I was using prior to getting the Prusa. Now, all of these slicers are free. Now comes the fun part. 
How do we get 3D models to make real things? Starting out, you can likely find what you're looking for on websites like Thingiverse or Printables. Here are some of the things that Adam K6ARK has designed, like this tiny Morse code paddle. You could print things using just these sites, but at some point, you're going to want something that either isn't there or isn't exactly how you want it. And that is where it gets really cool. You can design it yourself. 3D CAD software has gotten a lot easier to use over the years, but there still is a learning curve. For those starting out with simple projects, you can use Tinkercad, which is a web-based 3D CAD with the new maker in mind. Tinkercad is pretty easy to use, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with this simple yet free tool. But if you want to go to the next level, I'd recommend either FreeCAD or my personal favorite, Fusion 360 by Autodesk. FreeCAD is 100% free and open source. It isn't quite as easy to use as Fusion 360, but you can use it freely, even for commercial stuff. Fusion 360 is, a, is free for hobbyists with some limitations, but so far those limitations have not prevented me from making anything I wanted to, for 3D printing. Most of those limitations have to do with file export options and some limitations for commercial types of manufacturing. One other tool, though not required, but is really helpful when designing parts, is a digital caliber. You are often going to want to fit parts around other things, and you'll need a way to get some accurate measurements. Even with accurate measurements, you may still have to do some iterations to get your part just like you like them. Just like the KX2 mount. I printed three or four of those before it was just right. There's one more thing that you will need to start printing, and that is filament. Filament is the plastic that goes through your printer and onto the build plate. And there are many different types of filament, but starting out, you're really only gonna need two. I recommend PLA for things that won't spend a lot of time outdoors or don't need a lot of flexing. It's a little easier to print, which is why many hobbyists start with it. And the other type you will want is PETG. PETG stands up to the elements better. So if you plan on using something outdoors or in the heat, I use PETG. Both PELA and PETG come in a wide variety of colors, so you can get pretty creative. The price of filament spools range from about $15 to $30 typically, but can get even more expensive for some specialty types. The nice thing is you get a bunch of stuff from one spool, so it only costs you a few cents to make most things. 3D printing is a lot of fun and can really enhance your ham radio experience. may not be for everyone, but needing something and being able to make it yourself is very satisfying. Thanks for watching, and I hope that this gives you a better idea of how 3D printing can add to your ham radio hobby. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing and hit the bell so you know when my next video comes out. Until next time, 73.